dear students in this video i will be explaining about principal planes principal stresses and stress invariants so first let us see what is a principal plane so i am writing down the definition of a principal plane here in any stressed component there exists a plane in which only normal stresses are present or acting that means the corresponding shear stresses in that plane will be zero or nil so will there be one principal plane or multiple principal planes in a stress component there will be multiple principal planes so i am giving the definition of that too principal planes means there will be three mutually perpendicular planes in which only normal stresses are acting forces or stresses okay that is the shear components on these three planes will be zero that is no shear stress components acting in those planes that means the principal planes next let us see what are principal stresses i am writing down the definition of principal stresses also here the stresses acting on principal planes are known as principal stresses and generally they are denoted by the symbols sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 now let us consider a solid body sectioned at a plane and let us assume that plane is a principal plane that means there is only normal stress all the shear components that is tau in all the directions will be zero so the resultant normal stress also will be equal to sigma n so let us write resultant stress okay and usually we denote it using sigma nr so the resultant uh, stress in that plane sigma nr let it be equal to sigma n and let us denote it using simple sigma now let us write the components of this stress that is sigma n acting along x y and z directions okay they are sigma nx will be equal to sigma into anx sigma ny equal to sigma into any sigma nz is equal to sigma into anz where anx any and anz are the direction cosines to that plane i have already explained what are direction cosines in one of the previous lectures now let us name this set of equations as 1 let us also write these stress components using cauchy's stress formula okay so sigma ns according to cauchy's stress formula is sigma x anx tau x y any tau x z anz similarly sigma ny can be written as follows and also sigma n z can be written as tau x z a n x plus tau y z a n y plus sigma z into a n z let us now uh, name this set of equations as 2 so as the left hand side of equation set 1 and left hand side of equation set 2 are the same the right hand sides of equation 1 and right hand sides of equation 2 will also be equal so the right hand side of equation 2 minus right hand side of equation 1 should be equal to 0 now i have written both the sets of equation here and subtracting 1 from 2 rather i would say i am subtracting the right hand side of equation 1 from the right hand side 
of equation set 2. So, the first component sigma x minus sigma into common is a n x plus the other two terms will not have corresponding terms in the first set of equation. So, we can write that directly. As their difference is 0, I am equating to 0. Next, subtracting the y component of this normal of equation 1 from equation 2. Similarly, subtract the third equation of set 1 from third equation of set 2. So, we get this equation. So, altogether we got three equations. Now, I am representing this in matrix form. So, here in the matrix, uh, the all the stress components are written down. Okay. So, here along the diagonal we have the normal stress components and all the others are shear stress components. So, this is a 3 by 3 matrix. Now, we need to multiply it with the direction cosine column matrix and this will be equal to 0. So, here in the real condition cosine matrix cannot be equal to 0. So, what we can do is we can make the stress component matrix equal to 0. So, the determinant of this stress component matrix should be equal to 0. So, that is what we are going to do now. I am writing down the same stress component matrix and I am going to find the determinant of this matrix. So, here the determinant of this matrix we are equating it to 0. Now, let us do the expansion of this determinant. So, here we are using the conventional method to solve the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. I hope this part is self-explanatory. Equal to 0. Continuing with computing the determinant of this matrix that is also self-explanatory. and equating that to 0. Now, I am expanding this equation. I have omitted the intermediate steps that you can do. So, finally we get sigma cube minus sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z into sigma squared plus sigma x sigma y plus sigma y sigma z plus sigma z sigma x minus tau x y squared minus tau y z squared minus tau z x squared the whole into sigma minus in brackets I am writing the next component that is sigma x into sigma y into sigma z minus sigma x tau y z squared minus sigma y tau x z squared minus sigma z tau x y squared plus 2 tau x y tau y z tau z x. So, this will be equal to 0. This whole thing is equal to 0. This equation can also be written in a compact form as sigma cubed minus the whole thing is written as i1 into sigma squared. This whole thing can be written as i2 into sigma minus the whole thing in the bracket can be written as i3 and equal to 0. This equation is known as the characteristic equation of principal stresses. where I1 represents the first stress invariant and that is equal to sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z 
and I2 represents the second stress invariant and that is equal to what is in the second bracket that is sigma x sigma y plus sigma y sigma z plus sigma z sigma x minus tau x y squared minus tau y z squared minus tau z x squared. Then I3 represents the third stress invariant and that is equal to what is in the final bracket that is sigma x sigma y sigma z minus sigma x into tau y z squared minus sigma y into tau x z squared minus sigma z into tau x y squared plus 2 tau x y into tau y z into tau z x. So here I am writing the characteristic equation of principal stresses in terms of stress invariants. That is sigma cube minus I1 sigma squared plus I2 into sigma minus I3 equal to 0. This equation has three real roots that is sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3. And these uh, stresses are known as principal stresses. So sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 are the principal stresses. And generally sigma 1 is the maximum principal stress which has the maximum value and sigma 2 is the intermediate principal stress and sigma 3 which has the least value will be the minimum principal stress.